Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Hey guys, and welcome to the next part of the photos tutorial where we're going to be creating a tree. So um, in the first part, we created the base cylinder. We unwrapped it. I explained a few things, quite a few things actually. And um, now we're going to be moving on and using the unwrap, um, the UVs that we saved as a JPEG, taking them into Photoshop and we're going to be uh, essentially uh, applying a texture to them. So I've already taken um, the step to open up that UV map. So you've got the tree UV map already opened in Photoshop. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and go to the folder where I have the tree trunk. So I've got um, this bark uh, texture um, which I got from textures.com so if you want to find um, good textures that you have the rights to use in your own productions even if you're working on games then you can find um, them all on textures.com okay so next step is I'm gonna be dragging over the tree bark uh, texture that I've acquired I'm gonna take this into uh, a new file for now um, let's try it again. I'm going to drag that over into a new file. Just hit Control A to select all, and then I'm going to be dropping this in uh, to here as well. So it's a little bit small. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be um, dragging this up and trying to place it. Now, one problem that you'll find is that when you're trying to line things up, it's going to be quite difficult for you to see the edges of your UV template. Like you want to use this as the guide, and it's obviously difficult when um, you can't see through this model, uh, sorry, this uh, this texture or this layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be copying over the background layer, so make a copy of that. Okay, then you're gonna drag the copy up above the, um, the tree trunk uh, texture. And then within our layer styles or layer effects, we're gonna go to linear dodge. And what that does is it allows us to see through the black in the UV map and only see those uh, green and white lines, which is really great because then we can actually line this up uh, a lot better. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead into this top corner. I'm gonna be um, placing it one pixel over like the green line, okay? So you wanna make sure you uh, remember that over, over on that top side. And then I'm actually gonna be um, holding Alt and I'm gonna drag this down so it snaps onto the bottom. Okay, I've done that because I don't want it to obviously stretch. So I could hit Control T and I could either stretch it this way or I could stretch it like that way, but then the text is gonna be too big and we don't wanna have it looking really blurry and stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead, like I said, hold Alt and drag, and that's gonna make a duplicate of that layer and it should, like the layer I got, sorry, the image that I got um, from textures.com was a seamless texture, which is really good um, because what it means is then, you know, we don't have the seams running across where it kind of joins together. The issue that we have though at the moment is that our tree trunk isn't that wide. So um, we need to actually crop this and then we need to make it a seamless texture again so that uh, it fits perfectly with our own UV map of this tree trunk. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be right clicking on both of these layers. If you hold control, you can select them both. Then you're gonna merge those layers together. And then what I tend to do is just because it's gonna wrap around the tree, I'm just gonna squish this in just a touch. So not too much, just a little bit. Now you don't have to do that, but uh, from experience, that sort of helps a little bit. So like I said, at the top here, we're one pixel over, like so. On the bottom here, we wanna try and get the same kind of thing. So if I just hit Control T, can you see how that's a little bit lower? Now, it's not gonna to matter too much if I squish this up um, by that much. It's not gonna to matter too much. So I'm gonna leave that the way it is. And then what I need to do next is I just need to go ahead and actually like crop out the excess but again, we want to crop out so that we leave only one pixel hanging over that edge. So I'm just going to drag over the marquee uh, selection and I'm going to make sure, like I just said, it's just one pixel over the green line. Then I can press delete and it will get rid of it. Okay, so then what we're left with is just that texture there. Um, but the problem now is it's no longer a seamless texture because um, we've obviously cut into it. So now we're gonna go ahead and actually make this a seamless texture. So the way that we can do that, uh, the easiest way that I think anyway, is if you just hit Control A uh, on this layer with the tree trunk, hit Control C, that's gonna copy all the contents, which is effectively just this shape. We're gonna to go to File, New, and it should already set the width and the height to the size of the pixels on that layer, which is effectively this tree trunk, okay? Now you see it's a similar shape. Hit Control V to paste, and then you're left with just that layer all right so um and just that image so we're going to now go to filter we're going to go down to other other and then offset so there's already a value of 110 but if i reset that to zero and if i just push this across like a little bit 
it's really difficult to see um, but there is a seam in there so if I just press OK can you see the seam running all the way down the middle like it is hard to see and if it's hard to see then you know it's, it's okay you can kind of get away with it but I want to make sure it's better yeah because there's gonna be some people in a game that see this and they're gonna be like what the hell I can see a seam in this tree uh, not that people pay a lot of attention to trees in games um, well you should because it, it's quite difficult to make them so make sure you pay attention um, but you can see there's a seam running all the way down the middle here all the way up and all the way down all right so you can see that it's a line, a clear line. So we're going to fix that up. We're actually going to be going now. We're going to create, uh, sorry, we're going to use the clone stamp tool, which is just over here. So if you click on that, we can then obviously adjust the brush. Now I have a bit of a, a trick here. The brush shouldn't be very soft. Okay, a lot of people think you use a very soft brush, but it gives a really weird effect because it will just blend the edges in too much. So let's say if I hold Alt, Alt will set uh, the origin of the clone. So if I was to select, let's say here, and I was to paint down here, can you see how it kind of fades like a little bit? Also, the opacity for some reason is set to 49. It should be 100%. So make sure the opacity is set to 100. But as, as I sort of paint down, it kind of tries to fade in the edges. And although that looks okay, it, there, there is a chance that as you kind of see, you kind of get this weird kind of like fading. Um, but again, you can, you can experiment. If that works for you, then fair enough. But I tend to go a little bit harder with the brush um, and then also shrink the size a little bit as well. So what I try to do is try and capture uh, different areas of the tree trunk um, just to kind of like blend them in a little bit so that, you know, it doesn't quite stand out uh, as, as much as the others. So um, yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Maybe soften it a touch. going to go in now a key thing also is that you shouldn't actually copy or clone directly on the side so if I was going to clone like if I want to cover this area of the seam don't like copy the area directly beside it because if you're painting that it, it might look like really similar like, you know you get that dot you get that one there it starts looking very repetitive so if you kind of go a little bit below and then try and cover that up can you see how it kind of you don't really get that repetitiveness on the same um, horizontal line basically so you want to make sure you mix things up a little bit go from different angles select different areas as well and things will start to blend in pretty nicely you know you can also click in random places as well just to kind of work in different details and stuff um, but the key thing here is don't go in a straight line like that because then you're going to be able to see that seam line which is obviously not what you want you want to kind of break it in and merge it in in different places and different areas and then um, you, you'll start to kind of get the effect that you're looking for all right so we're just going to go i'm going to continue doing this and then once it's done um we're going to move on with the next step okay so that's the um offset done like the seaming has been complete so therefore there like it should be a completely seamless texture i've painted up the seam so now what we're going to do is hit control a to copy we're going to go back into here we're going to remove that layer that we already have existing and we're going to paste this in um, now the key thing now is i want you to bear in mind that i do know what i'm talking about so um, what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this down so it's only one pixel over in height, but we're going to pull this across a little bit. So you see what I've done? I've kind of pulled that across um, like so, just so it overhangs and kind of covers the top area of the um, of this tree as well. Now the reason why I've done this is because I need this to be a seamless texture and that's actually going to help me actually. So uh, the next thing I need to do, because we've got a gap just here, I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to drag this across just so it snaps on that side. And once again, because we've made it a seamless texture and because it snaps, um, that will look pretty damn good. You shouldn't be able to see, see the seam running straight down the middle. Okay, so that's done. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and go to File, Save As, and we're gonna call it Tree Diffuse Map. Okay, that's the name that I've set for it, so we're gonna call it Tree Diffuse Map. And then we're gonna go into 3ds Max and we're gonna apply this texture to our cylinder. So I'm gonna press M on the uh, keyboard to bring up the Material Editor. Uh, default is going to be slate material editor, but if you go to modes, you can go to compact material editor. And then if I go into a brand new material, I'm going to name this tree trunk. There we go. And then I'm just going to simply, because this is the easiest solution, is drag the tree diffuse map into the material sphere. Okay. At that point, we can just 
apply that with this arrow just so this icon here assign material to selection um, and this should already be highlighted the show shaded material in viewport so if it, if you can't see it in the viewport make sure you click on that icon just there to make it visible a quick thing that i want to note um, before we move on is if you go into the top left hand corner of your perspective view go to configure viewports we're going to first of all disable and the display selected with edge faces because that's going to help us to fix the seam because we don't want the edges visible when we have the object selected because um, it will hide the seam and we won't be able to tell. So we're going to then go into display performance and make sure that your texture maps are at a minimum of 1024. The default is 512 um, but make sure you change it to 1024 it will just make your textures look a little bit better within the viewport. Okay so what's going to happen now if I press F4 yeah, nothing happened. So let's just double check that. Okay, I didn't deselect the actual option that I was telling you to deselect. So disable, uh, sorry, display selected with edge faces. Make sure that's ticked off and press OK. So now if I press F4, I can actually toggle the edges on and off on that particular model. So I'm just going to um, move this forward a touch because it's a little bit close to that plane. But if I rotate around this, we're going to see if we can find that seam. So I've already found it. You can see that seam pretty clear right there. Um, not looking very good at all. If I was to hit a quick render, you can see that there as well. Uh, let's see if this makes life a little bit easier. If we just make the display performance 2048, seeing as that's the uh, texture resolution, and hit apply, that's going to actually help uh, quite a bit. So make sure you actually, I thought 1024 would be okay, but because our texture is actually 2048, uh, we're going to change that to 2048 in our texture maps. And as you can see, it's a lot clearer within the viewport, um, but and it actually makes that seam more visible. So we're gonna actually hide that seam now. We're gonna fix that, because the last thing you want is to be able to see your seams. So if you go um, within the Unwrap UV W window, you'll see a green line down the seam. That's not what we wanna be uh, able to see. So we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna deselect map seams under display. So that's gonna hide those map seams um, which is exactly what we want. We're going to open the UV editor, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click in this drop down, go to reset texture list because then that will bring up our um, map number two which is our texture uh, within this window just here. Alright so I'm going to give you a quick tip. What we need to do is go to vertex, we're going to click and drag over all of the vertices on this actual tree trunk, not the top though, um, and then we're going to scale it sideways. So I want you to look really closely at this seam so we're going to hold shift just so we can scale in a straight line and you can see how like that is pretty much the same as the other as the point just there so if we just keep moving it across very careful like if i just go across a little bit a little bit oh oh it's really tight trying to get a seamless texture can be a bit of work let me zoom in some more now if you still can't um get a good um if it's still sort of snapping a little bit when you're holding shift and you're scaling, it can snap a touch. So what you can do is just zoom in, in your view just here. Make sure you're zoomed in on the corner. And that way when you hold shift and you scale, you can get more control. So you see how there, I've got a lot more control. I can actually get it to a point where it stops seam, uh, where the seam actually stops. I'm just moving it across until that seam line disappears, uh, which at that point it has. Okay, so holding shift from the corner, making sure you're in freeform mode and not scale mode, because scale will actually scale the whole thing bigger or smaller, which is not what you want. It's not, you don't want it to do that, all right? You want to make sure you're on the freeform mode. You can no longer see that seam running at all up that side of the tree. So if I just hit F9 to do a quick render, the seam has disappeared. Okay, guys, so um, that's pretty much that in terms of actually applying a... Um, seamless texture on this but we're going to go ahead and we're going to shape this uh, in just a second so we're going to right click on the unwrap UVW we're going to collapse all to set that and then we're going to go to uh, vertex and we're going to simply scale in the bottom uh, sorry the top we're going to scale in the top uh, what is wrong with me today uh, so we're going to scale that top in now don't worry too much because the top's going to distort a little bit so if I just uh, focus on the top you can see what happens that distorts uh, like so but we are going to fix that to a degree. So if we just go ahead, make sure all the vertices on the top of this tree trunk are selected. We're going to go to weld and we're going to hit the little button to bring up the options for weld. And then we're going to go and increase the threshold until they all merge together as one. Okay, there we go. 
Now that's actually a lot better, so there's a little bit of a seam there, but don't worry too much because this is going to be like a minute part of this tree. Um, so we're not even going to see it because it's going to be right at the top. It's going to be this tree trunk that kind of flows over to the top hand side just there, so it's going to be really hard to see. I'm going to scale this part in as well just a little bit, um, just to kind of make it a gradual change in angle, okay? Because the last thing you want is for it to look very, very bad. So um, at this point, I'm just going to shape this very loosely, just go with each loop and just scale it, scale it, scale it. And once, to, once I get to a point where I'm generally kind of happy, um, it's still a little bit thick, so possibly I'll go like all the way down to here. Make sure you scale with this border just here. Don't scale with the middle. If you're going to select loads and loads of rows of um, vert, you want to scale with just this border, and that's going to scale it across those axes only. So I'm just going to bring that in a little bit, maybe deselect this one. Let's select the top one there. We're just going to do that a little bit more just to make it a touch thinner. I think around about there is okay, and then let's transition it a little bit more just here. Let's make that a little bit thinner. All right, so it's being subtle. It's just making it a gradual change in angle. Don't go too crazy with it. And then, you know, we've got something like that. So right now, of course, it's just a point. It's going straight in the air. But you'll notice that there are no seams as we go around it. That's what we wanted. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and in the next video, we're going to be um, shaping it so it actually fits the shape of our um, reference image. Okay, so stay, stay tuned for that video guys, it should be coming out soon. Hopefully you've enjoyed what I've done here and you find it valuable and you can use it on not only this texture uh, for this object, but in any uh, rounded object like a vase or anything like that that you want to create uh, a seamless texture for. Okay guys, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you all next time.